Hello, I am Grant Hickman, Product Manager for the Security Policies Group at GitLab. In this presentation, I want to share more about our upcoming release of the Pipeline Execution Policy Type. Before we get started, I must note that we will be talking about upcoming features and functionality. Keep in mind, these plans are subject to change and should not be used for purchasing or planning purposes. With that out of the way, let's talk about security policies and this great new policy type that we're introducing. So first, what are security policies? Security policies are an overlay category with a laser focus on enabling security and compliance teams to enforce controls globally, granularly, and through a singular customizable experience. If we zoom out to look at the broader DevSecOps lifecycle, the challenges and concerns that plague our customers touch every stage and group. With policies, we don't intend to build new settings in GitLab, but to collaborate and build capabilities to enable the security uh, and compliance professionals to do their jobs faster and easier. Policies can reach into and configure settings, locking them to ensure enforcement, and can also automate workflow steps. While we have two policy types today, we are working to introduce new policies across the lifecycle to address the most potent concerns for our customers. These policies span across automations for vulnerability management, policies for sec uh, security and dependency management. One of the most common use cases we've heard is around enforcement within CI and CD. How CI jobs are enforced, as well as how the workflow should be enabled globally. Let's uh, first look at the CI jobs the use cases. When enforcing CI jobs, users often want to use the default or latest templates or customize rule sets in the jobs being enforced. While many get value out of our native scanners, they may also want to extend their coverage by adding external scanners, such as Qualys, Checkmarks, Zonotype, or Fortify. Customers are also enabling compliance jobs or custom scripts to run within a pipeline to evaluate the pipeline and check for custom business logic or rules, and they want to be able to enforce this kind of behavior globally. Quality gates are another use of global CI enforcement, where some teams may want to enforce a formal UAT process with external requirements that may block the pipeline. Some customers want to enforce workflows that conditionally interact based on workflow steps, such as int introducing self-healing workflows to address vulnerabilities. And there are many other cases for creating custom workflows and pipeline logic to automate security and compliance globally. An edge case example is to create project labels or tags automatically to provide more visibility into the project's composition. While we covered some specific jobs that customers want to enforce for security and compliance within their pipelines, there are also expectations for how this workflow should behave. Customers want to enforce jobs globally and granularly across their instance and, uh, or namespace but they also don't want to have to configure these behaviors one by one, such as through scripts. They need a central place for enabling and enforcing controls. As jobs are enforced, it's also important that jobs cannot be tampered with, uh, but at the same time, rollout across thousands of projects at scale can be tedious. They want these jobs to be easily enabled and enforced without impacting or blocking development teams or slowing down velocity. Some customers want to override project pipelines entirely at least for certain business critical applications, and to manage these through a center of excellence. This would allow these teams to block or limit um, other application teams from managing their own CI in a controlled manner. This is especially the case for highly regulated businesses and government agencies. Other customers want to allow for CI jobs to be injected gracefully into existing project pipelines while still ensuring compliance. To address these use cases, we introduced to you the pipeline execution policy. This new policy type allows for enforcement of a pipeline execution file that defines the CI configuration you want to enforce globally. This policy type will include one action that enables enforcement of custom CI jobs, scripts, or rules. These rules are defined in a remote pipeline execution YAML file configured in the policy and define the jobs that will be enforced. Within the pipeline execution policy, we'll be supporting two modes of enforcement, inject and override. Inject mode will gracefully enforce jobs through reserved stages. Overriding jobs will, be, will replace the project CI configuration with the CI defined 
blocking the ability to enforce CI with the uh, enforced projects. Let's talk about each one in more detail. Reserve stages uh, with inject mode, reserve stages will be implicit within all projects. Jobs enforced through a reserve stage will appear in the project pipeline. Otherwise, the reserve stages will remain hidden for the projects. Initially, we will support policy, uh, pipeline policy pre and pipeline policy post the reserve stages. Jobs injected uh, through reserve stage will be enforced in ephemeral isolated pipelines. What this means is that each policy pipeline is built independently of the other policy pipelines and the project pipeline. You can imagine it as if you temporarily replace the project's GitLab CI YAML with the policy content, and instead of persisting this, uh, this pipeline, you put it aside. We iterate over all applicable policies, up to five, targeting a single project, and build all policy pipelines like this. Afterwards, we build the project pipeline and we combine the jobs from all of the resulting pipelines together and persist that which is then executed. As a result, jobs can be enforced within a, with the same job name in the project CI configuration. Jobs can share the same name in multiple pipeline execution policies enforced in a single project as each set of jobs will run in isolation. And project jobs uh, cannot be executed out of order and cannot in interfere with one another. For example, project jobs using an empty needs statement in the project pipeline cannot run ahead of a job defined in the pipeline policy pre-reserve stage. Furthermore, in eject, in eject mode, jobs defined in the pipeline execution YAML may leverage global workflow rules, but those rules will only apply to the policy jobs that are defined within reserve stages. As these jobs are run in isolation, the workflow rules will not affect any rules defined in the project team's CI configuration. Now let's take a look at override mode. For some teams, they may manage their DevOps or CI configuration centrally through a center of excellence, and they prefer not to allow other project teams to create and manage their own pipelines. Or this may be the case only for a subset of critical projects. In this case, it's possible to define a pipeline execution policy using overwrite mode. With this approach, the project CI configuration is overridden entirely. Any CI YAML defined at the project level will be ignored, enforcing only jobs defined in the pipeline execution YAML. If multiple pipeline execution policies are enforced on the same project, injected jobs, any policies defined with inject mode, are allowed to be enforced and merged with the CI defined in override mode. Another feature uh, that comes with our pipeline execution policy type is policy scoping, which is available across uh, all policy types. And this is a, a feature we recently introduced, uh, which can be used to refine enforcement of any type of security policy. So scoping will also be available within this policy type. However, we will initially be limiting the scope options to enforcing only against projects with a given compliance framework label. In the future, we'll be exploring how to add support for scoping per group or project. Alongside this, uh, with the pipeline execution policy, and as with other policy types, once you've scoped a policy to a compliance framework, you will also be able to see uh, which policies are associated with the given framework through your compliance center. This will ensure that compliance teams can better understand which projects are being enforced by the policy and to be able to report that to auditors. As security and compliance teams work to enforce CI jobs to run within hundreds or potentially thousands of projects, it can be difficult to anticipate the impact. So with this new policy execution policy type, uh, you will be able to choose a Git ref or a reference to the branch containing your pipeline execution YAML configuration. This will allow you to create test policies and test the configuration on a set of test projects before rolling it out globally. And as you make incremental changes, you can first test in a subset of projects before applying those changes to your primary policy that will impact existing projects. For any jobs enforced through a pipeline execution policy, project teams can also use the validate tab to view all of the jobs in the simulation. This can help users downstream in the projects to identify which jobs may be enforced in their project from the external policies defined uh, from the uh, external jobs defined in the policy. 
So that covers all of our key capabilities, but I'd also like to walk through a few considerations and limitations to keep in mind. First of all, we will have a few limits in place. Up to five policies will be supported per level. So you can have five at the group level, at a subgroup level, and at the project level. And uh, up to five policies will be supported targeting a single project. Policy scoping will be limited to enforcement against projects with a given compliance framework label, as we covered earlier. Projects can only be configured to override or inject on triggered pipelines. We will not yet be supporting scheduled pipeline enforcement. If you use needs um, in the policy CI, you cannot reference jobs from the project CI and vice versa because they are built in isolation. In the policy CI, you can use needs and uh, be able to pass in, uh, artifacts across from other policy jobs. Um, so that is that is something that's supported, but you can't have um, information crossing the plane between the project and the policy. Jobs can be defined to be enforced on any stage, but this is not recommended and requires those stages to also exist in the projects where they're being enforced. And this can result in other unexpected and unsupported behaviors. So it is recommended to only use reserved stages when defining your jobs. Pipeline execution policies work with most pipeline sources, but not all. For example, the Web ID, Web IDE and on-demand Dascan pipeline sources will be excluded. Pipeline execution policies will ignore uh, CI.skip to ensure that they are always enforced. Currently, pipeline execution policies require the CI to be enabled in each project, but they do not require that a GitLab CI YAML file exist. So if no configuration file exists, the pipeline will run only with the jobs enforced within the pipeline execution policy. And lastly, variables used within policies take precedence over all other variables. So this initial release of the pipeline execution policy is only the beginning of improving compliance enforcement of pipeline jobs. Following this release, we have some known opportunities to explore and we will be listening for customer feedback. Exact timelines are not yet planned for these items, but we are in the process of validating and investigating the implementation. One such improvement is the introduction of a condition to enforce and inject custom CI jobs into a scheduled pipeline on target enforced projects. This would work similarly to our current scheduled scan execution policy type, but will support custom jobs and scripts. Another improvement is to be able to enhance uh, our ability to scope uh, pipeline execution policies uh, to also target groups and projects. Today, uh, again, you can only um, link a policy to a compliance framework, but in the future, you'll be able to scope your policy also to projects and to groups. To provide further clarity to development teams of what jobs are enforced within their pipeline, we're also exploring visual indicators of uh, policy enforced jobs. With this improvement, we'll add a security policy chip on the job for any enforced jobs, or for a reserve stage, we'll add the chip in, in the uh, section under the stage name. This will help dev teams to, to be able to easily identify uh, from which policy the job originated and when uh, there are enforced jobs within their projects. We'll be exploring additional locations as well where we might give a clear line of sight to development teams so they can understand when and how jobs are imposed and give them tools for better troubleshooting if there are any conflicts or issues. So that covers um, all of our current plans and we do look forward to feedback and really appreciate your time watching this video. Thank you.